Hey, what's up, fam? Thank y'all for tuning in once again. As always, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, hit the notification bell so every time I drop a video, you will be the first to know about it. So let's talk about this article I came across yesterday. It's about a quote unquote proposed cop city being built in the southern sector of Dallas. You got some residents who have a problem with this, and I can understand why they would, but I can also see it on the other side too. So let's just get into it because we have a few questions and let's hope we can come up with some solutions. Let's have some dialogue. So this is from the DallasObserver.com and it reads, Stop Cop City, proposed DPD training facility faces local opposition. Now you know, I think they're having that same problem out in Georgia, right? I think it's in Atlanta, a certain part of Atlanta or Savannah, I'm not sure, but they're having the same issue because they're trying to build a cop city out there too. So let's see what, what uh, all the fuss is about. It said a new facility facility can help train police in Southern Dallas if the idea can win voter approval at the upcoming bond elections. Cause I think they start early voting pretty soon here, out here in Dallas. Okay, so it says uh, Tamara Neal or Tamara Neal, a third generation Dallasite who grew up in South Oak Cliff now lives downtown, but her Southern Dallas roots remain strong. She's trying to make an impact on her former home by advocating for people to vote against Proposition F in a 2024 bond package. She wants, she wants to stop new police training facility from being built in her old part of town. Now, South Oak Cliff, yeah, I think, yeah, okay, let me, let me keep going, because I think that this is right. Proposition F includes $50 million for the construction of a new Dallas Police Training Academy at the University of North Texas at Dallas. The biggest problem with this specific prop, she said, is the lack of community buy-in for the project. Now, my question is, when this came up, and I see this is, you know, in the Dallas Observer, my question is, how many citizens in this community actually went to the city hall meeting when this was being brought up and discussed because i'm gonna tell you what i know about propositions like this anything that 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 the city council the mayor whoever anytime they come they have an idea that's going to change the city in any way whether it's uh commercial real estate infrastructure uh, legal law enforcement education etc 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 there has to be a meeting they're gonna have a meeting i don't know it may or may not can involve citizens but i know many cities many state cities <clears throat> states think it's like <clears throat> i'm not sure how many times states have it but i know many cities have meetings at least once a week probably twice a month at the least and they come up with these proposals and people come up and they you know they speak about things that they want to create things they want changed ideas they have and then you know it there's a eventually there's a vote if it can get through certain levels if there's a vote to see if they should or shouldn't do it my question is when this was proposed because they post this stuff one online on web on, on the government websites they put them in newspapers uh you could be walking in your laundromat or at your at your post office or what have you and they post what the agenda is at these meetings. Again, how many people are actually going to these meetings, uh, you know, finding out about this stuff and then going to these meetings to listen, to take notes and to voice concerns or approval. If you don't have, cause here, cause if you don't have a lot of people who attend this meeting, this is where the problem becomes. There'll be sound bites or there'll be fractions or, or, or phrases that are said to the public who didn't show up to these meetings and they'll mess around and get the wrong understanding of what's going on or or really they'll act like or feel like they have no voice in the matter because it's like oh man they're about to do what man why they didn't tell nobody mm, they did they said, this is what they're doing, man. This ain't right now. We got to fight this. Okay. Why? You know, if you're not involved in your local community, and that's one thing that we try to push, 
is we know that you know we got the presidential elections coming up but again like this like dallas is having a bond election a lot of cities are having elections in may for bond packages tax pack you know things that directly affect your community but we're so caught up in donald trump's trial we're so caught up in joe biden's mental health which i'm not saying don't look into it and don't participate in it but you know look at it from the right perspective not just because democrat republican races fake races you know or open races hidden races you know pink in the brain one's a genius one's the same you don't know who is basically all the same right but anyway so you have to put yourself in become an activist in your community you don't necessarily have to go out and pass out turkeys at thanksgiving but just showing up to these meetings, just voicing your opinion, just learning and getting a message out to the community like this young lady is doing. Let the people know what's going on. That's the least you can do. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the least you can do to help to help your neighborhood. You may, you know, help your neighborhood. You may not have the money or the resources, but you do have the ability to stop and study and pay attention to things like this. That is something that the Most High gave you is your sense so use it to help your community out it said i think of our it said proposition f it said uh the university it said gonna put it at the university of north texas at dallas now this is off of was it 20 in houston school road now i don't know if it's still there but it used to be a place it used to, it's a ranch there it used to be called skyline ranch and i just remember because back when I was in high school or graduating high school, they had like a, you know, a senior party there. And also I think it had like a radio station party there. So it's a, it's a Skyline Ranch back down. It's a ranch down there that, you know, they just have different events. You know what I'm saying? For, I remember for school, like school events and stuff like that. But yeah, that's on the Southern part of Dallas. And you know, it's a lot of black Americans stay there. It said, the entire process is not being community centered. Neil said, the community needs to be brought to the table before you say how much money you get to assign to a militarized police training facility. Again, if she knew about it, how come everybody else didn't know about it? Somebody knew about what was going to happen before it got to this point. She's organizing the group called Community Movement Builders hoping to convince enough people to vote against Proposition F to stop the new facility from springing up in the largely black and Latino community that surrounds UNT Dallas. There is also a grassroots effort called Stop Cop City Coalition aimed to stop Proposition F. You know what puts a bad taste in everybody's mouth about these coalitions and these groups is Black Lives Matter. That whole debacle where it was just I don't know what you call it, but it was a scam. It was, it was, it, and you notice how it kind of just went by the wayside and black folks just forgot about it. Stop talking about it. Comes up every now and then, but no, it's like no one wants to say, it's like people are afraid to say something about it. Kind of like slavery, Jim Crow, you know, the riots, all the riots that the white folks had in black towns throughout the South including Little River, Little River County back in the day. It's like people just don't want to talk to us. It's like people just don't want to talk about it no more. Like they feel shame. But no, you got to, you know, call stuff out like that. So, but I think Black Lives Matter went the way that the folk wanted it to go because after that, when things like this pop up, it'll kind of make people leery of joining organizations that, featured or ran by black Americans, specifically black American women. Although they were just really, in hindsight, you can tell they were just the face of the organization, but not the ones who actually ran it, but they are the ones who ran it into the ground. In, two, in, 20, in 2013, the organization Stand for Children Dallas released data on what some call the cradle to prison pipeline, a term used to describe the odds that a child winds up in prison based upon where they grew up, according to the Dallas Morning News. Based on 2008 data, the organization's research identified areas of the city that, quote, that account for the most inmates in state prisons. $10 zip codes accounted for 3,100 prisoners. All but one were in the southern part of the city, including 75241 where UNT Dallas sits. Quote, that automatically lets you know that the community has been targeted, Neil said. 
This community has been disproportionately and unfairly targeted by law enforcement. It is wrong to it is the wrong investment in the wrong time for the wrong purpose. Let me tell you something that I learned about being successful or getting things done in your life. There's never a right time. There's never a perfect time to do the right thing. Never. I'm a, I won't say never. I say rarely is there a perfect time for you to do the right things. You know how people say, man, I'm going to start a business, but I have to do this. I have to pay these bills off. I got to get my credit score. I want to start a family, but first I have to do this. And right now it's just at the right time. I'm going to go back to school, but the thing is, a lot of the situations, a lot of issues that you have as an adult, they're not going to go away. You always have bills. You will always need to work. You always need to make money. You always need to do something. Something will always come up every day in your adult life for you to, that you're going to have to handle. So then it becomes an issue of prioritization. If you prioritize things right, then you make sacrifices then you can accomplish bigger goals. I remember being in nursing school, one of the hardest things for me to do was to step back from my kids, some of my kids' activities because I was so used to being at, you know, taking them to school every day, uh, uh, being at all functions, uh, doing homework with them, taking them to all their sporting events, school events, coaching them, homework, picking them up from school, I was used to doing that even while I was married to their mom and even after the divorce, I was used to still being there in their lives every day. So when I went to nursing school, one of my instructors had to tell me she, that, that I would have to step back from that for two years, just step back, not necessarily disassociate myself with my kids, not that, but just gotta step back with some of the stuff I'm doing with them in order to get this degree because it was hindering my learning my learning, not saying it was negative, but just saying the bigger goal is to be able to take care of them down the road. Because right now you're barely making it, you're struggling to do everything and you is messing up your schooling. Get through this, get your degree, and then you have all the time and the money in the world to do what you need to do, do for them when they grow up. Which technically wasn't true, because now that you got a job here, now I feel like I'm working every day trying to make more money than what I really need, trying to, you know, pay back them, you know, them student loans and things like that. But anyway, that's the, uh, like I say, it's just never a perfect time to do anything. So that's like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that statement. Sometimes you just gotta just jump out there and do it. Just jump out there and do it and hope for the best. She would rather see the money address other community needs, such as healthcare and housing. We have to think about the overall well-being of this community. She said, Neil isn't alone in this thinking. The problem is, like I said, you got, there's never a perfect time to do things and you got there's so many issues that you just can't say, hey, we can't deal with this. We have to deal with this. I understand what she's saying, that there are other needs that need to be addressed. Well, that's how you, you that's where your voting and your city council meeting attendance, that's where that comes in to play. And you, and you make sure that, hey, we need money for this, 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 and this. We not gonna vote because that's how politicians do each other. They say they'll tell they'll tell each other, "Hey, I will back this proposition, but I'm gonna need you to back this." And whether they like it or not, they'd be like, "Okay, fine." We gotta do the same thing. Look, we'll take the cop city, but I'm gonna need you to put money on this. And if you don't, then well, we're gonna make sure we're gonna do everything we can to make sure this cop city never. You know, it's come to fruition, but you got to have enough people to stand behind you or stand with you when it goes down. But if not, you just be on here on Dallas Observer doing an interview and only a handful of people like myself read it. It says, what does it say? Yafua Balogan, an activist. I'm sorry if I missed your name up. Area resident and precinct chair for the Dallas County Democrats said he too would like to see the money spent differently. I feel that the pro proposed money should go towards having a legitimate grocery store or helping create summer jobs for at-risk youth. 
or find a way to promote financial literacy versus putting a police academy directly in the community. Bottle gun said. It don't take fifty million dollars to build a grocery store. Um, what else? Money spent differently. Democrat. That's another thing that kind of makes you sit back and seem look you no know, get a leery feeling about this. Cause Democrats are the ones who wants to defund the police, right? Well, that's when that holiday defund the police. Then your president got up there and said, I'm not defunding the police, I'm gonna give them more money. They make y'all look stupid. The problem I have with defunding the police is that you have to have law enforcement. The current state of the police force is terrible. It needs revamping. I've always said that. You can't, you shouldn't get rid of the police. You shouldn't take money out of the police. What you do is you restructure it. You do, you know, you have different training. You take out the people that's in there and the old regime and you put in a new regime and you train them differently than you train the old ones. You, you fact, not back, background check, fact check, whatever you call it. Each of your cadets, you make sure they they have a level level of education, uh, a level level of mental training. Uh, what do you call that? Just tr you know, circumstantial training on certain issues and life threatening situations, situational training. And you make sure they have enough of that, so when they get out there, and you put the people amongst their people. I mean, you have to do that. You know, it's not, it may not be a hundred percent great but it'd be better than what it is you know when i say it, you gotta put your black american with your black americans your latinos with their with latinos and majority and you know whites with whites you got to because people have right now there's a stigma unfortunately that we don't that our people don't you know um trust the police so it's better to go ahead to put someone that look like us who think like us, who feel like us, who can be a little more compassionate to our understand feeling. And people who just people, you gotta have people out there who care about people. And you uh and I think you'll have better outcomes with the police and the community. They'll be more apt to, you know, talk to the police, let them know when what what's going on jacked up in the community. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you gotta do <clears throat> the police forces ha it has it has to be different it has, it has to be changed that's what has has to be done so i don't believe taking money away from the police force because if you do it right then truthfully you probably don't need as much money as they're proposing because if everything runs smoothly then you know you're not spending so much money on recruiting because you got you can maintain police forces you're not spending so much money on, you know, building more facilities and prisons because the police is doing their job in the neighborhood, which is helping the neighborhood do their part and keep in the, keeping crime down. Everything works together. There's nothing separate about it because you take away the police force. What do you think gonna happen? Shoot, the crime is gonna go up. <clears throat> it says, according to a press release from UNT Dallas, plans call for the facility, facility to sit on a five acre section of the college's 200 and 68 acre campus. It would be adjacent to a park shared by the campus and training facility and includes classroom, the gym for work, a gym and workout facility and virtual reality training technology for officers at all levels. If approved, it will serve new recruits, supervisors, civilian employees and law enforcement from across the state it would also be the new home of the Caruth Police Institute, which I looked it up this institute is actually in South Dallas. Uh, I probably think it's, it's either next to or within the uh, Dallas Police Headquarters. So the Karoo Police Institute is already, you know, has, has already been built. They're just talking about moving it down to to uh, the, the UNT campus, but they already have a curriculum. They already like joined up. They already have partnered up to have this curriculum. They're just trying to move it to down there to where the, uh, down there to where UNT is. But 
as I was saying earlier, the problem with the police force in the U.S. is that there's not enough training for police in this country, which is why there are so many problems between police and the citizens. You see these cops plant evidence. You see these cops, you know, killing, you know, over over killing people in traffic stops. What was the guy hit? 90 something bullets, you know, saying thrown at them in a matter of 30 to 40 seconds in, in the traffic stop. Don't know nothing about the traffic stop. Don't know why it happened. All I know is 91, 98 bullets. That's a whole lot. It was a whole lot of bullets for one person. That is shooting out of fear. I don't know how many cops it were, but shoot, like I said, that's a lot. Somebody should not have been trigger happy though. I know even the military, like, control how many shots are being fired when it comes to like combat or what have you. But I came across this little article. I'm going to go through this real quick off the BBC.com because I just wanted to let show y'all how little training the U S does in their police force. And this is where your problem is. So the issue is like, number one is if you don't want the cop city to go at UNT Dallas, I mean, yeah, UNT Dallas, where do you put it? My suggestion is, Put it next to the prisons. I Google searched and there are at least eight jails or prisons in Dallas County. That's not including where I live, which is outside of Dallas County. But you got the Seagullville, I think that's a federal prison. You got Hutchins is a big prison. Dallas got, you know, Dallas was a loose, is loose there it's still open? But you got, you got, you know, you got jail down, downtown Dallas. Well, right there at the border of South Dallas and downtown. But you could put them close to there. To me, that would make more sense. Because, well, let's just say like the prisons, like in Hutchins and Seagullville, because those are a little further away from like, like neighborhoods, <clears throat> you know, because they have a lot of land around them. So it's like a lot of open space. Although there are some that's close to, you know, to town or whatever. But yeah, I think that's where... You know, you should put, like I said, I think that's where you should put them. Maybe not so much right, like I said, in, by a school campus. But, I mean, it's just police training. And, again, it's not that, because my concern would not be that where it's at or what it's for, but what are they teaching these people? If they're still teaching them the same way, training them the same way that police has always been trained, it don't matter if you put it in Dallas, don't matter if you put it in the country, don't matter if you put it under the sea, you're gonna have the same results. So what's the point? So then I then I would be like, yeah, then you know, you don't you don't need no more facilities here. Y'all train the same thing. Keep doing what you're doing until you get it better. Feel me? But like I said, I go on this BBC.com and it says like how US police training compares with the rest of the world. And it's like I scroll. I'm going to kind of summarize this. It said, how many people are killed by the police? About a thousand people a year are killed by the police officers in the U.S. According to an independent project that tracked police violence. Most are shot dead. Let's see. This is back in May of 2021. Okay. Let's say police killings as a proportion of population per 100, um, per 10 million people in select in selected countries. So when you look at this, there's a chart here. It's a prison policy initiative report of 2020. It shows, if I'm looking at this right, per 10 million people, the US, police killers at a proportion of population, the US at per 10 million people is like, is that the highest, I guess that's 35. I don't know if that's 35 people or 35, you know, a percentage of, you know, some kind of percentage, but it said 30, like up to 35. The next, Closest is Canada at 10. Australia is around about eight, looking like Netherlands is like three, New Zealand about two or three, Germany like one, England. So basically, the US has the highest rate of police killings pretty much in the world. Part of that, it said part of this is to do with the gun culture the US is home to around half of the world's civilian held firearms. Yeah, I mean, shoot, police be scared of sun gun. 
It said in 2020, fewer than 10% of people killed by police were recorded, fewer than 10% were recorded as unarmed. But a lot of times they say that, and then you look and there is no, you know, there, there is no gun. There's only a cell phone and a pack of gun. It said in 2020, 49 police officers were shot dead while on duty. It said, um, in the same year, officers killed more than 20 times as many civilians, and some argue the use of force is disproportionate to the threat. With better training, with better training needed to de-escalate situations, that's where the issue is. The training for de-escalation. That's why I feel like the training needs to change. That's one of the that's one of the aspects where training to change. It said nine out of ten calls for law enforcement have nothing to do with violence at all. And while they definitely encounter violent situations that could escalate, often it's police officers who are escalating the situation. And now it says, how long does police training take? On average, I said there are 18,000 police agencies. There are around, there are around 18,000 police agencies in the U.S. But with no national standards on training, procedures and time scales vary across the country. On average, U.S. officers spend around 21 weeks of training before they are qualified to go on patrol. 21 weeks. That's what is it, 52 weeks a year. That's not even six months. Not even. What is that? Four? Four, four to five? Four months, maybe? Four, 16, five is 20. Five months? Not even six months. So let's say this is far less than most other developed countries according to a report by the Institute for Criminal Justice Training Reform. It said, it shows, in this chart, it shows that Finland has like 5,500 hours. Germany has around about 4,000. Australia has around about 3,500. England has about, look like about 2,200. Canada has about 1,000. And the US has, about, look like about anywhere from six, Five, you know, the six to seven hundred hours. So you're talking about six hundred hours compared to fifty-five hundred hours of training before you're allowed to go out there on the in the streets. It said the report looked at police training requirements in more than hundred countries and found that the U.S. had amongst the lowest in terms of average hours required. It says also many other countries require officers to have a university degree or equivalent before joining the police. But in the U.S., most forces just require the equivalent equivalent of a high school diploma. High school diploma ain't nothing. I'm just going to put it out there. When it comes to professionalism and you have to have more training to and more, more education to become a professional in anything in this country you have to, to be a doctor lawyer nurse uh work with artistic kids you know bcba uh an accountant nurse practitioner anything with a profession you gotta have some kind of two to four year degree or some 18 month certification right to say that you are professionally trained to be able to perform your task and a lot of times, and some of them tasks or training or fields have nothing to do with life or death situations. This does. Every time you put on that badge, every time you clock in, you're a police officer. At any given moment, your life could be taken or you have to take someone else's life or you have to make a decision that could be life or death for either one of y'all. And to only have 21 weeks of training and given a gun and to go on patrol in neighborhoods you probably know nothing about and people you know nothing about. If you just have a high school diploma, I'm telling you, you do not understand the psyche of the human mind. You go out there thinking you're gonna go and you're gonna change the world and you kind of realize that criminals are criminals and people lie. People are deceptive. People cry, people lie and cry, let's say that. They'll make it seem like they're just being given uh, not a fair shake Everybody, everything is unfair. No one is trying to help them out. When in actuality, eh, the circumstances may not be what you want them, but a lot of things that you do, you can be it can, it can be avoided. But in their environment, that's not how they're trained. That's not what they're you know what what what, what they've been taught. 
It says in England and Wales, it has recently become mandatory for officers to have an academic degree, which I, I, I agree. Cause you gotta have, to me, you gotta have more training in the real world. Like I said, high school, you kids. So all you got is enough training, uh, the equivalent, equivalent training of children. And then they say, you can go out there and be on a police force. To me, that's the most craziest thing in the world. Finland has one of the highest gun ownership rates in Europe with around 32 civilian firearms per 100, but incidents of police shooting civilians are extremely rare. U.S. Police Act Academy spends far more time on firearm training than on de-escalating a situation. 71 hours against 21. On average, according to a 2013 U.S. Bureau of Justice Statistics report, and in the U.S., the escalation of force is at the discretion of the officer, whereas in countries such as Norway and Finland, there are more rigorous rules as to what considered justified use of force. Most of the training in the U.S. is focused on various types of use of force, primarily the various types of physical force. The communication skills are largely ignored by most police academies. This is why you see officers very rapidly escalating from initial communication to the actual physical use of force because this is how they train. So see, that's what the problem is. Like I say, it don't matter where you put the police academy. Because let me tell you like this, if the police was really like, had a good re rapport and relationship with the community, they wouldn't care. Wouldn't nobody care where you put a police academy at. Wouldn't care. Because they know that they're getting the proper training. They, they Matter of fact, they it would probably be welcomed into in the neighborhood. But to say that you don't need one because the community need the money for something else, yeah, yeah, they need money for other things, but they also need money for this because, let's be honest, there's also a lack of police officers. This is why they are building facilities. And this is probably why there's only 21 weeks of training because you have police officers that are retiring. Things are changing, but it's no different than nursing. Look at the statistic in nursing, they are saying, and teachers, because the problem is the training is not just the training inside the, the academies. It's also the people, the civilians. Because you're dealing with people, like like I say in nursing, you deal with people. You go in wanting to help them, wanting to get them better, walking out better than the in, the, in uh, than the condition that they came in. And they come in, they tell you that, that story of why they're in this situation, why it technically wasn't their fault. You know, yada, yada, yada. You fall for it. And then every day you go in there trying to help them fix the situation. And next thing you know, they did. They go back and do the same thing that they came in for in the first place. And people tell you, man, hey, this person here, they, you know, they do drugs. They do this and do that. You know, you just, it is what it is. But then they come in acting like they need your help. They want you to fix them, but not necessarily fix them. Just prolong ease their pain so they can go back and do what they do. They go through the whole cycle all the time, but that stuff gets tiring. And then people in the corporate in, in, in the corporate offices, they don't have your back because they're all about making profit, which, hey, it's, everything is a business, right? So it makes you frustrated. Teachers, they get no money for, you know, to, for school supplies. They get no help for these bad kids that come in acting up in school. They can't touch the kids. They can't say nothing to the kids. The parents ain't teaching these kids anything, you know, to be respectful to elders and teachers. And it becomes a cycle to where teachers want to retire. They quit and nobody wants to come back and teach. Hence, come here, here come your AI teachers. Police force, same thing. Nobody want to be on police force because they're getting accused of being, you know, over escalating, I know how to de escalate situations, shooting people too quick, being too brutal, but you're not being trained long enough. A lot of these places, you got to be trained like a couple of years before you can become a police officer. 21 weeks isn't crap, and you don't have a degree, so you're basing what, what, what are they? They either people who only got a high school diploma, like I said, only got a childish childhood education, or they're out the military, so all they know how to do is kill. So they're upset because the people that train them don't have their back. So now they're ready to quit and retire. Same thing in nursing. 
trained to take care of people, but then you go in there and you're dealing with patients and staff members too, who just ain't on the same page as you. And then now you're ready to quit and do something different. So my thing is on this, in this situation is that I wouldn't be someone, well, first, everybody go down to your city council meeting. If you can't make it, I, I'm quite sure they stream them online because I know my city does it too. So if you can't make it, just make sure you know when it happens and you know get your notifications like you need to do with this channel when you like, share, comment, and subscribe. You hit the notification bell. That way, when they get ready to have a meeting, it pops up, you get the, you get the announcement, and then you can go watch it when it comes on. And if you got any issues with it, you can always call, write, go down there and speak your piece. Always, but always be in the loop with what's going on in your community. That's the most important aspect of voting that you could be a part of. That's one. Two, like I say, it doesn't matter where this thing is going to be at as long as they're doing the same training. Psh, hey. But I can understand, hey, we don't want to hear. We don't want to hear now unless you're going to change. That's, that's what I would say. Go down there and say, unless you're going to change the curriculum, we need your curriculum to be the same, if not better than Norway and what's the other countries, uh, Finland and Germany, where they have like a lot more training and a lot less crime. Something, you know what I'm saying? We need to know what they're doing. If not, you can't put that here. It's simple as that. But anyway, tell me what you think about this story, man. Uh, leave your comments below and share it with the world. Let's have a dialogue on this because I would like to know what everyone thinks about quote unquote cop city. Me, I think, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you have it if it's done right. If it's not done right, put it somewhere else and don't bring that stuff around here. Simple as that. Hey, four ways you can uh, support the channel. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. All four ways take you but maybe like a couple of minutes out your day. Helps the channel boost it in the algorithm, get more views, and to where I could, you know, bring more content and better content, content to invest in the channel. If you want to get at me, you got any ideas, want to talk about anything, hit me up at soul in the soil at gmail.com that's soul in the soil at gmail.com if you want to support monetarily you can do like super like uh, super thanks super chats or you can go down to the description box get a couple of links there you can help support the channel but anyway however you support whether it's likes or monetarily i thank you i appreciate everything and with that being said i leave you in peace 